Throughout history, there have been people who have committed some of the most heinous crimes fathomable. For those crimes, they have been convicted and sentenced to death. Welcome to Death Row Executions, where we take a look into the lives of society's worst offenders. And now, your host, Air. Donald J. Beardsley was born on May 13, 1943 in St. Louis, Missouri. He was the eldest of three children and grew up with married parents. Unfortunately, his father died when he was just 11 years old, leaving his mother to take care of the family all by herself. Four years after the death of his father, Donald, who was considered a very shy and socially awkward child with no history of violence, was sent to military school until the age of 18. By 19, he decided to join the Air Force and was working as an aircraft mechanic. In 1965, he and another serviceman were caught stealing a car, so they were both transferred to Minnesota where he was relieved from his mechanic job and was sentenced to a work farm. While at the work farm, he suffered head trauma after being struck in the head by a tree, so he stayed in a coma for a while. After four years in the Air Force, he was discharged and upon leaving, he started a relationship with a woman by the name of Karen Kelly and the two married in 1966 but divorced two years later in 1968. The following year, in December of 1969, and now living in the state of Missouri, Donald would frequent bars. One night, while hanging out at a local bar, he met a 54-year-old woman by the name of Laura Griffin. The two went home together, and instead of it being a casual hookup like Laura assumed, Donald killed Laura that night. Laura was in her bathtub for two days, and the only reason her body was discovered was because Donald spoke with his minister and a lawyer and decided to confess to police. He pled guilty to second-degree murder and was sentenced to 18 years in prison. While in prison, he met with many social workers, psychiatrists, and therapists, but it was never on a consistent basis. He said he had no reason to kill Laura, had no idea why he did it, and then blamed it on the fact that he could have been drunk. In prison, he was also diagnosed for the first time, and the diagnosis was schizophrenia. It was documented that he did try to receive support while locked up, but the prison was not able to provide regular treatment and or support. Even though Donald was sentenced to 18 years, he was released after seven years for good behavior. He was paroled and had to live in Redwood City, California near his mother. He ended up getting a job working at HP as a machine operator, and was living an honest life, but his honest life was short-lived. It was the beginning of 1981 when Donald was driving one day and picked up a female prostitute by the name of Ricky Soria. Ricky was also a drug dealer who was an addict herself. She and Donald became friends, used together, and Donald invited Ricky to live with him and she agreed. By this time, Donald was no longer with his mom and was living on his own. The two were roommates and Ricky was now introducing Donald to her friends who were also up to no good. Stacy Benjamin, Ed and Patty Gedling, and Frank Rutherford. In March of 1981, Ricky was given drugs by Frank which caused her to overdose. She survived because Donald was able to take her to the emergency room in time, but things went downhill from there. Everyone involved in this story ended up giving different accounts of what happened and why murders occurred, but the anger shifted from Frank to Stacy and Patty because a man by the name of Bill Forrester said that the two women cheated him out of $185 worth of drugs. Ed was also mad at his wife Patty because he caught her cheating on him with Stacy, so it was said that he actually purchased a shotgun and gave it to Frank because the men were all in agreement that the women needed to die. It was April 23rd, 1981, when Ricky invited Patty and Stacy to her place so she could sell them some drugs. Once the women arrived, they were met by Donald, Frank, and Ricky. Equipped with a shotgun, Frank shot Patty in the shoulder and then tied the women up. Frank winked at Donald saying that he would take Patty to the hospital but they had other plans. His intentions were actually to make Stacy think that everything would be okay. Frank, Ricky, and Donald ended up leaving Stacy alone and drove Patty to Half Moon Bay, where Frankie shot Patty two times. After handing the shotgun to Donald, 
He too shot Patty twice more and they left her for dead. Frank, Donald, and Ricky drove back to Donald's apartment where Stacy was still there all alone and unable to move. They went on a cocaine binge and drove over 100 miles to Lake County, California. Frank attempted to kill Stacy but was unable to so asked for Donald's assistance. Donald hit her and then finished what Frank was unable to do. Stacy's body was left behind, but her body was discovered soon after her death and police found a phone number that was left behind and found out the number belonged to Donald. When police questioned Donald, he confessed on the spot and told on the others that were involved as well. Being that Donald was still on parole for his first murder, he was eligible for the death penalty. Frank was sentenced to life in prison but died in 2003 while locked up. Ricky pled guilty to second-degree murder and spent time in prison. Bill was acquitted of all charges and Donald was found guilty of first-degree murder and sentenced to death. There were appeals made that were ultimately denied. During one appeal, they tried to argue that Donald did not have the proper legal representation being that his lawyer quit during trial and they also tried to assert that he was mentally ill. Donald was sentenced to death on March 12, 1984, and he was transferred to San Quentin Prison in California on March 14, 1984. In 2005, many tried to appeal to new governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. Donald was the first death row inmate to plead for clemency since Schwarzenegger had taken office, but he denied Donald's clemency. He did come out with a statement that read, we are not dealing here with a man who was so generally affected by his impairment that he cannot tell the difference between right and wrong. With that, Donald was set to be executed on January 19, 2005. He chose not to request a last meal and was given what all other prisoners had that day which was chili macaroni, mixed veggies, salad, and a cake, but he refused to eat anything. He made no final words, showed no remorse, and died by method of lethal injection. He was initially sentenced to die by method of the gas chamber, but since California changed its method, his method of execution changed as well. Thank you all for watching another episode of Death Row Executions, and I would like to thank all of my patrons and YouTube members for your support.